Hello, hello. I'm Brenton, one of our MCAT tutors here at Inspira Advantage, where we help students get into medical school and other professional programs. Welcome to MCAT Bytes. Today, we're exploring an essential topic in developmental psychology, focusing on Lev Vygotsky's theory of cognitive development. Vygotsky, a Russian psychologist, this guy on the left here, offered a unique perspective emphasizing the roles of social interaction, cultural context, and shaping cognitive growth. Let's dive deeper into these influential ideas that you are very, very likely to be tested on, on that psych so section. Let's start with comparing this to another very popular psychological founding father you're likely to hear about on the MCAT. That would be P.J. Vygotsky. Vygotsky's theory contrasts with PJs in several ways. While PJs saw children as solitary learners and exploring the world, Vygotsky viewed them as social beings, learning through interactions. He emphasized the critical role of language, culture, and social context in cognitive development. For Vygotsky, these factors are not just influences, but integral parts of the cognitive process. So let's break this down based on these six key areas. So for the social, sociocultural context, PJ says, eh, not a big deal. Vygotsky thinks it's a big deal. How about from the lens of constructivism? PJ takes a cognitive constructionist promote approach, or Vygotsky takes a social constructionist approach. PJ is famous for his strong emphasis on developmental stages, where Vygotsky says, hey, we don't need to do stages. We're just going to have a zone of proximal development, which we will talk about shortly. PJ thinks that equilibration, schema, adaptation, assimilation, and accommodations are all very important in the learning process, where Vygotsky more focuses on the zone of proximal development, scaffolding, different language dialogue interactions, and tools of the culture. We're only going to talk about the ones that you actually need to know for the MCAT on that, but just so you kind of have a broad overview of where the psychological theory is coming from. The role of language isn't a big deal for the MCAT for either of these guys, though Vygotsky thinks that it is much more important than Pichet does. And then there are a lot of practical implications that arise from these thinkers. Pichet would say, support children to explore their world and discover knowledge. And Vygotsky says something kind of similar. He says, establish opportunities for children to learn, with the teacher and more skilled peers. But honestly, there's a lot of crosstalk between these two. Both of them think that, hey, children are not yet adults, so they need some help. Vygotsky will do this through scaffolding, which we will talk about in Uno Momento. A central concept in Vygotsky's theory is, we've already mentioned it twice, so let's do it a third time, the zone of proximal development, or ZPD. This zone represents tasks too complex for a child to master alone, but possible with guidance. Vygotsky believed that learning in the ZPD leads to cognitive growth. It's like a bridge between what a child can do and what they're on the brink of achieving. Scaffolding is closely related to ZPD. It's the support provided by more knowledgeable others, such as teachers or parents, while the child is learning. This support can take many forms, demonstrations, prompts, or step-by-step -step guidance. As learners become more skilled, the scaffolding is gradually withdrawn, encouraging independence and competence. So how this diagram is representing that is the blue circle would be what the kid can do on its own. So maybe it can read a picture book, but a knowledgeable other, like a parent or teacher, can help expand that little blue, blue bubble of what they can already do. This would be the zone of proximal development. What are they next? Proximal means next to. What are they ready to develop into? And by scaffolding, using technology and tools, you can help the child get there. So in our example of the kid can only read picture books, well, you would sit down with the child, help them sound out the letters, providing scaffolding assistance until they are able to do that on their own. And then the beyond my reach category in the dashed line is what the child is incapable of doing before passing through the zone. So beyond my reach could be writing a master piece of literature. Well, if the kid can only read coloring books or picture books, that's not gonna happen. We need to take steps to get there. Mm -hmm. Now, I want you to try along at home here to try and explain how scaffolding is taking place in each of these examples. So take a minute, share with a friend, or just talk to yourself. Starting with the left one here, we have a parent, probably not a teacher based on how close they are, helping his daughter learn how to read. In the middle, again, we have a kid, looks like they're doing math. The parent is explaining, therefore that's the scaffolding on how to do math. And then what a wholesome one, we've got a kid riding a bike, the dad just let him go. So the dad presumably was holding onto the bike, having the kid have balance before being set off on their own. So this is a great example of the kid could stand on a bike at first with dad's help, 
um, and after dad lets go of the scaffolding or lets go of the kid, the bubble has now grown. The zone of proximal development has expanded. But I also said that language was important. So when are we going to talk about that right now? Vygotsky argues that language development is fundamental to thought and reasoning. Children use private speech, which is basically just talking to themselves. It's what I just had you do if you didn't have a friend. I want you to talk to yourself as a tool for thinking and problem solving. This internal dialogue is crucial for cognitive development, especially in the early years or when you're studying for the MCAT. Vygotsky also placed... Now let's apply Vygotsky's theories to a classroom setting. In a Vygotskyan classroom, collaborative learning and discovery are key. Teachers scaffold students' learning, tailoring support to their ZPD. Group work and discussions are encouraged, allowing students to learn from and with each other. Now, this is not what you need to see no for the MCAT. However, this would be a great passage that you could see on the MCAT. So I just want to expose you to the concept of a Vygotsky classroom. What would a PJ classroom look like? Vygotsky's theory offers offers a rich framework for understanding cognitive development. His emphasis on social and cultural dimensions provides a valuable complement to Bijet's stage-based approach. By studying Vygotsky, we gain deeper insights into how children think, learn, and grow. Thank you so much for joining us on MCAT Bites. Stay tuned for more engaging topics in psychology. See you next time.